Notably, no one mused aloud about whether these children, whose lives hang in the balance, might merit equal protection of the laws or their common law right to life and limb, or about the implications for our communities and the law itself when archetypal case resolutions on the fate of innocent millions with derivative effects on countless other areas of law addressing human meaning are resolved in the wrong way, or whether the consideration of profound matters of civilizational dimension like this perhaps should not be principally framed and discussed in terms of secondary procedural questions, such as the amount of authority that the court should ascribe to its acknowledged erroneous but long enduring and venerated case rulings. Now, of course, I don't for a moment believe that the justices and the attorneys who are participating in the Dobbs appeal are unaware of the human stakes. As such, I assume that their out loud points are likely proxy arguments used to accomplish the case resolution that they covertly understand justice to demand. But that only highlights the unseemliness of this guild characteristic of refusing explicit attention to the fateful profundity that is in fact implicated in the case resolution, which makes any judicial resolution achieved upon such omission seem unsuited to the task. I am cautiously hopeful that the court will rule in a way that overturns Roe. I would rejoice in that outcome. I am less hopeful that a majority of justices will join together to clarify that Roe and its sequelae represent a moral and anthropological disaster that has besmirched the court perhaps irremediably and contributed to a national sensibility and a legal logic that represents a horrible distortion of the purpose of law, the meaning of personhood, and a person's defining relations as fathers, mothers, children, and family members. And moreover, to confess that Roe has facilitated an unsightly sequence of subsequent judicial rulings that likewise renounce and negate basic standards of human identity and family order. I devoutly wish to be proved wrong in that expectation so that I may celebrate a course correction of a truly remedial kind. But a Roe reversal of a more tepid kind, while still welcome, if not carefully crafted, could perpetuate the law's posture of ethical vacancy and the related judicial myth that truths about human nature are not what is actually at stake in the law's dispositions of this sort, and therefore discourse about such matters should continue to be unnaturally cabined within the constricted focus and terms found within the court's case law categories. <clears throat> 